Ah, good morning, my friends. It is I, Alphineas Goo, uh, here at uh, a hotel uh, far off in California. Uh, we have uh, had a little issue this week that required us to come out here uh, to uh, try to take care of Ms. Goo's dear mother. Um, she's having a little bit of a health issue. And so I apologize for not sending out invitations and all the things that they normally do for this but uh, but we had to we had to make a quick run. Everything is good. I want you to know that um, uh, Ms. Ms. Gu's mother, who is named uh, Janet, is is doing well. Um, there are some things that we need to address with her doctors, which is primarily why we came out here. Is because when remember this when you have old older parents, right? Uh, you know that uh, sometimes you have to advocate a little bit for them with uh, with the medical profession. So just always keep that in your mind, just uh, that uh, that they are not always um, um, uh, as as capable of of advocating for themselves. So just keep that uh, keep that well in your head as your parents get older, and or if you're old, remember you might need your kids to uh, advocate. You're hearing this, Kimmy, Devin, Mike, yes, <laughs> advocation, advocation. Listen, if you ever hear or see like a snarky old lady named Janet um, making fun of Alphineas on Facebook, that is his mother-in-law. Well, and she, she is, got uh, she, she is got some tude, and it's amazing. <laughs> she is wonderful. We love yes. her dearly, and um, and we were pleased to come out here and yeah. uh, and uh, check on them and be with them. Uh, it is always wonderful to see them. It just caused a little bit of a bump in the road for a number of things that I had planned for the week in terms of Good Morning Zayafe. So you'll all have to just put up with a little bit more of a, what do they call this? Uh, the 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 sing improvisation. I'm good at that. I'm not worried about that. I I'm know it's gonna be fun, right? It's just uh, <laughs> do a little so, dance. Uh, <laughs> Man, I, did you, did you I don't know it? if I could say the next line. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Get down tonight. Okay. Anyway, we're off the rails already. Uh, we have some great guests that are going to join us to do our first segment about cosplay. Yes, so let's let me just give a quick announcements what we're going to do today. So did you, you found that you got the Sendestian thing? Yes, I'm going to work on finding it. Marvelous. Yes, so I will work on finding we're it. We're so spend a little time on Sundestia today, which I'm very excited to do. And I'm actually hoping here as we move uh, into the summer months that we're going to have a few. Hey, James, I thought you weren't going to make it. It's good to see you. <laughs> I didn't send out invites. So as far as I know, there could be nobody here today because everybody, you know, you got to be reminded sometimes of being ever to hear. Yes. Look at this. I love that someone has the name Captain Shenanigans. I feel like that should be our shenanigan moment of the week. I don't know. Yes, since yes, we've been talking sure. about our new shenanigan contest. Yeah, we're going to have fun with this shenanigan contest. We're actually going to post rules and all that. kind. Of, we got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about the the Contributors Guild and all the stuff that's going on with that. We got to talk about the writing contest, which a lot of people are participating in, which we're very excited about. Um, um, and but but we're pretty we're pretty excited this morning because we have we have a couple of folks who really do cosplay like seriously. Now there's lots of folks who do this, but we are we are pleased with with Margaret and James to actually have them on to talk about cosplaying. We have lots of pictures that they have sent us that we're going to show you of them in cosplay. And they're going to talk to us about all the cool things that they do when they go to conventions and go to these various places and, and get to play as these characters. So uh, I guess without further ado, uh, do you, uh, do, should we bring them uh, on well, board? Yeah, I think we should. I just want to say one thing before we start. Alphineas, you know that you are a huge cosplayer because like literally you live and embody your character. Yes, I've told you this. I've told you before, right? I'm driving along sometimes with my dear Miss Goo, right? We're <laughs> going for dinner, right? And I go, so Diane, where would you like to eat tonight, right? And she hits me, right? She gives me a big smacker. And she says, get out of the loop. Right? I would argue that there's no greater cosplayer <laughs> in our community than that of Alphineas Goo. Anyway, mm. I'm going to turn off my camera because um, there are some Wi-Fi problems earlier. So um, we will get them on, but wait till you see, you got like 50 pictures, right, camera? Yes. Yeah, it's like 50, really. And you saw a few of them right there when we were looking at them. And uh, we're just excited. We want to do some cosplay uh, support here, too. We've got a few other cosplayers we want to show over the next year and uh, and bring some folks on. So I apologize for that, my friends, but we will... Uh, we will fix it next time. All right. So, Camera Mandy, should we do a little uh, social media stuff or what yes. do you want to do? Yes, I think we should. Now, um, I'm going to make an announcement. An announcement. Now. Uh -huh. And by the so. way, thanks to all of you who showed up this morning, because I, like I said, I didn't send out any invites. I didn't do anything like we normally do. So I assume that we have a lower number. I'm not even looking at that, but I assume we have a lower number than normal. And uh, 
And, you know, it's because people need to be reminded. And by the way, all of you who do this for us, I so appreciate it because we send out these invites in Discord and in uh, Facebook. But in Facebook, when you say, I think I'm coming or maybe I'm coming, that actually, I think, helps us allow uh, to, us to invite more people. So when you see those little invites come up, if you can just respond to that, that's very helpful. And if you've never uh, sort of subscribed to the, done a follow on this, this Twitch, uh, Twitch channel, that would be wonderful if you would do that too. All right. What do you got, Camera Mendy? Okay, so we heard your feedback, and the the break that we had talked about for going to Europe, we have found a replacement to come run the stream while we were gone. We want to get a bunch of gooey people on, like do some panel type stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, my dear brother Lawrence, who um, you probably know and remember, he's um been a little off the radar radar for some reasons but he's going to come back and take on the stream for three weeks while uh Alphineas and i are over in europe and then if we can we will join the stream <laughs> and like also chat um if not it's like a little bit lower pressure on us and so no, no, um, we're, we're excited we really, yes. we really if you, we we kind of want to do a little uh, little panels with a few good yes. people so there's a few people we're going to invite personally. And if you've got something you might want to, to jump on and, and have a little chat about, you should send a little email to Kemra Mandy and say, hey, Kemra, Mandy, if this could work, I'd love to do this as part of the panel. I'd love to, to do at least some discussions around sort of Zyothic lore and, and some of those kinds of things that we've been doing and have, have because we have a lot of, of lore masters that are out there and uh, folks who really, really know uh, what we're doing. So if you have the, the the inclination and you'd like to, you know, probably have four or five folks at most on along with Lawrence and, and we're going to do this um, for about three weeks. And Camera Mendy and my intention is to be around if, even if, if we're just in chat. Uh, again, it's an Internet issue with Europe is the, the thing that we're concerned. We about. We just don't know where we're going to be at what time. It's it's just hard to schedule and the it's several hours ahead. Of where we are. So, we are going to take some video though and let you see yes. uh, UK Games doing, Expo and yes. all of that kind of stuff. And uh, so, in the, we're going to see a couple castles. And so, we're, we're going to we're going to send some fun stuff home for you all to uh, to enjoy while we are out there uh, gallivanting in, in know, England and beyond. I'm going to try something. James and Margaret are. Hello, is it better now, James and Margaret? Can you hear us? No, no, they're still no, they're okay. Still I was really hopeful there for a second. They're still hanging out in the background, so I was like, "Oh, maybe we could get them going." They look so great in their uh, Dungeons and Dragons it's, cosplay. It's, 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 I'm it's, so you know what? Yes. In this world, in this world of this technology, and where you don't, yes. you know, you're not. You, you, this is just the truth, right? Yes. This is just the truth. We have to figure out how they got a bandwidth issue that we got to we got to deal with, and we'll deal with it. And we'll figure it out because you're going to love the pictures. Yes. All right, and you're going to love them. Wonderful yes. folks. Okay, so um, if you are interested in uh, appearing on a panel with Lawrence, uh, please shoot me an email at cameramandy at gooeycube.com. Um, we need to make sure Wi-Fi is good <laughs> ahead <yeah>. of time. <laughs> um, but it, it'll be a really good time. And uh, Lawrence is a great moderator and will really facilitate some great discussions, I think. so. Yes, yes, yes. And so we'll be establishing those things over the next couple of weeks. The shenanigans thing is going to continue even while we are gone. Ooh. So so the better you are at shenanigans, um, the more opportunities you're going to have to to win some cool things. So I know we haven't really put the rules out there, but part of shenanigans is that there's sort of no rules yet. So that's... that's <laughs> You gotta have shenanigans. So, <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started on social media. Yes. Okay. okay. So, oh, this is a good question by Brian. So, yes. um, uh, and was did Casey answer this one? Because I, I yes, he I did go in and any... answer it. And basically, uh, the question is about Gen Con games. Um, we have a full schedule of many, many games for people to play. Um, but they are just waiting on them to go live uh, on Gen Con, which I think he said would be in the next week or so. Yes, so. And, and for all of you that know about it, the Great Gooey Dungeon Game Show is going to be on Friday morning, morning. and we'd love to have all our gooey people there as much as want to attend. Last year, it was the 200 and some people in the room. It was pretty crazy, and uh, uh, we give away a, a ton of prizes, and everybody, I think, has a pretty darn good time. So if you can uh, come join us on Friday morning, if you're going to be at Gen Con, we'd love to have you there. And of course, you get a chance to maybe be in the audience. We've got some celebrities that are going to be playing with us. It's 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 a great time. It's, it's going to be so much fun. And then also, I myself will be GMing a game at Gen Con. So first time, 
I don't know what it is. I, I, I signed up for that game. Did you really? No, I didn't. Okay. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if me and you at the table is a great idea. But anyway, I'll ask Casey. If I did, the only reason would be to give you shenanigans, Gamble. I know. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle you. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, uh, this is so immersive. I yeah, feel Mark this is from Mark. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so great. And like, I just feel like it's a very immersive idea to kind of set the scene for like, kind of give house rules, which are out of game. Like they're like inherently out of game, uh, but like kind of set it in like a dungeon esque. I think it just sends something that could really set the mood for your party going well, it's in. It's also, they're great. They're great rules. If you got a chance to read them uh, on Facebook, uh, you, you'll, uh, I think you'll like them quite a bit. So give them a peek when you get a chance, if you have not. Yes. So that's from Mark. Well done, Mark. Yes. Oh, uh, Oh, this is gorgeous. This is from Harry, his newest mold. Uh, Brea is a druid. Yes. I'm reading, I'm literally reading what Harry posted. But anyway, I just, I thought that the, I love what Harry's doing with his sculpts and making them more dynamic and more interesting. Yeah. Um, he's doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, he's really, um, and so, so um, we're thinking, uh, we've already talked to Harry um, and uh, and Zach also wants to participate in this. So uh, we have a couple of sculptors who have been longstanding good friends of Gooey Cube and Harry, of course, more than any. Um, and they um, want to do a couple of sculpts that we will include in the Geisengox Kickstarter thing that we're going to do in August. Very cool. I'm, I'm hoping Harry will actually do uh, Luke's family. So uh, that's that's I'm um, I'm very very excited for for what is coming with that and. Uh, uh, we've had some great conversations with Luke. You can keep him in your thoughts and prayers if you're a praying person, or keep him in your thoughts if you're not. And um, uh, there, there's a there's a fairly significant thing going on with uh, with the estate of Gary right now, and it's kind of known around. So I'm not telling tales out of school, um, uh, but we are hoping that uh, for a good outcome for Luke and his family. So, all right. Uh, anyway, Harry, this is ma she is magnificent. Um, one of my more favorite ones that you've done uh, that I've seen. So. Uh, of course, that Skype, she's going to cut your face off with that thing, you know. It's a <laughs> uh, I love it. This uh, is like the thing that cut off um, Myron's head. Uh, no, it was a sword. I know. It's in the, it's in the song. Was it, could it have been a cool, I know. Say of old pulled out her sword and cut off Myron's head. But, I mean, <laughs> it's cool to think about. <laughs> Someday I'll do it. Someday I'll do a children's book about Myron the Ugly Troll. Oh, my God. I love movie. that idea. Yeah, cool, you know, I'm all for it. anything like kids yeah yes i know i would understand well this is in our minds Cameron. Uh, so so this has sparked a lot of conversation and we're going to try to figure out how to do it once we get back from europe um we're going to try to have a, a gooey vtt group um which is probably going to be self self-organized and self-moderated just just of fans um with us participating best as we can uh because the the the, the there's a lot of folks who would like to see us on foundry and so we'll see you know, we'll kind of see what uh, what progresses, um, and um, hope that we can uh, that we can uh, provide a nice platform uh, for the various VTT people to work together. It'll also make it easier for us to distribute things like like uh, uh, battle maps and and those kinds of things if we sort of have everybody together in one place. So, so we're excited about this quite a bit. So how how is this going to work? That like in terms of like, is it going to be on one VTT or is no, it it's, your it's own? All of, it's, they'll work together for all of them. That's, oh. what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. This is what I, I've gotten good advice from a number of folks who do, who are pretty involved in this. And so I think um, to be able to share practices and then, and then, you know, some folks are, you know, like Ben has spent a tremendous amount of time on fantasy grounds. And um, uh, of course, Casey, you know, spent a tremendous amount of time getting us up on roll 20. Um, but again, it's not, you know, it's not really a, a big money making venture currently. Now, I do think in the future that that folks who do this and, and um, actually if we can work with them and they're willing to do so, uh, will provide a, a percentage for folks to be able to um, to get paid when the, when they sell. But the thing is that just everyone needs to understand because there's so many different options on these various uh, VTT platforms and they don't really have a real good promotional methodology, right? Um, so pretty much everybody defaults uh, to the, the very well-known brands. And so Gooey Cube is just a little tiny brand and, and nobody does, doesn't really, not that many people know about us. So that's, we're, we're going to talk this through with the VTT people, but we're going to put it in the discord and, um, and have a place where they can, uh, 
where they can congregate and aggregate. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Great picture too, by the way, cameraman. Do you like that one? I love this picture. Mm -hmm. I think it's very motive. I kind of love it when you get into like a nice close up. So oh, yeah, yeah. The but, drama, I mean, of, the drama of the human face is uh, amazing. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Jonathan did this. Now, didn't we show this already, though? I'm confused why we did this. Camera Mandy shows up at my office and says, hold this and I'm going to take a picture. Yeah, because so we, <laughs> never, we never actually put it on our social media accounts. Oh. We, we, we showed it, it on the... Good Morning Zayate, but we never actually like did like a post where we like actually put it out there. And yes, we, yeah, so we met Jonathan. And, and also, we're trying to post like nice, candid stuff around the office every Friday, you know, just to give people like a little vibe. And so every once in a while, you're just going to have to hold something and smile. And okay, just well, anyway, <laughs> there it is. I, I actually have my beard stuck on top of it. So it's I know of, there's like a little hair. fleck on your glasses. This was a very rushed <laughs> photo. But with that said, Autumn took the second photo in the studio. And I think that is a gorgeous photo of that map. Yeah, I think it really is. And, and if you zoom in on that picture, you can see the incredible details. It's all three dimensional. It's the world of Zayathe. Uh, it is an incredible piece of artwork. Um, I just, I'm so pleased that we met Jonathan and had the chance to interact with him and and um have him uh, do something nice for us with his wonderful craft so it was it was wonderful awesome all right next up what is next oh yes so we are working on a number of things right now as you all know we are certainly working on darken haven by the way i'm supposed to take a peek this today at the fully uh, nearly fully laid out uh first round of book one of the darken haven uh City so I, I haven't had a chance yet to look because of all we've been dealing with with uh, with Diane's uh, Miss Goo's marvelous uh, wonderful mom, uh, but I'm going to take a peek here soon. But we are also working, of course, on the Dungeon of Duunix, which was part of the the uh, Kickstarter that uh, that Dave and those folks did. And um, you'll have a chance to be able to get this if you want to get this Dungeon of Duunix, which is based literally on the. Um, on the dungeon that we uh, that we did in the the game show, and uh, and so it's uh, it's a really the build goes and follows it, and it's got some really fun stuff. And then of course we're doing um, a number of other things as well, other projects on the side. And this might be one of those other projects that I'm not going to tell you too much about yet at this point. And of course we're working on the Mornwood, so we got a lot going on, which is okay. That's uh, that's uh, that's what we do, and uh, I, I think you're going to be astounded at these uh, these upcoming little adventures that are, by the way, for everybody who's been asking, the Dungeon of Duunix is a uh, level eight to 10 uh, uh, adventure. So for those of you who wanted to throw some higher level uh, characters into this world of Zyothe, we're going to give you that chance. Anyway, this was this was done by Benjo and, uh, and I really loved the idea of it. And it got a lot of wonderful comments about, it's not a trap, don't worry, just cruise across there. I think I can't. I think it was Christina said she skipped across. You know, there's yes, it's it, they're just friendly little gargoyles. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm still looking for Zundestia. I'm not finding the slideshow. So oh, we may not we may not have Zundestia. So so, so, so yeah. So Thomas um, sent me uh, uh, this these uh, the first three books uh, for Brian Sanderson, and I began reading, and I wanted to see what everyone else thought. Um, and goodness gracious, there's a lot of people who gave great props uh, to this uh, to this wonderful book. And so far, I'm in a chapter four right now. Uh, I'm at a finished chapter four. Um, uh, it, is, it has been a wonderful start. Uh, the damn book is about this thick, though, for all of you. It's a commitment, right? So just be uh, 400 and some pages, I think it is. I started but, listening to it on Audi Audible. So mm -hmm. I'm a good chunk of the way in. I'm so far enjoying it. There are other TT or TTRPGs. Um, books that I like a little bit more so far, but I think it's one of those things with any TTRPG book. It's like info dump, info dump, info dump. Oh, this is not a TTRPG, by the way. I don't think right out. This is just fiction. It's However, just fiction. I, but I heard that they're making it like his world into a TTRPG. Yes, I have heard that as well. Yeah. The, the, the thing about the thing about Sanderson, when I was reading about this after I, you know, Thomas and I had a couple of chats and um, the thing about Sanderson is he's really got some very interesting takes on magic and how it works. And 
um, has, you know, in this one, they talk about the, the lashings and what the lashings do. And you basically you're, you're twisting reality uh, and moving things around a little bit like the Doctor Strange uh, movie. If you remember how they made the buildings twist to the side and people were walking sideways and all of that kind of stuff. I, that's how I pictured this this lashing thing that was going on in there. Um, but uh, but the, 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 the truth about Sanderson is, is so far that I can see is very complex. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, it's going to appeal to me because I'm a, I'm a, I love complex plots. But if, uh, if you've, um, if you, if you like a thinner book, uh, in terms of plot line and, and complexity, that's this, this one might uh, overwhelm you a little bit, but we, so far, the, this old guy has really enjoyed it. So, uh, thank you, Thomas, uh, yeah. very, very much. And I, like, I want to say, like, uh, there was some controversy. There was an article written about Brandon Sanderson a little while ago. <laughs> um, if anyone has heard of it, it's like the wired article um but this guy like genuinely seems like a good dude um and like i'm very impressed with, with how much he's able to write and how committed he is and how committed he is to his fans so um i didn't, I didn't even know there was controversy till you told me Cameron. no there wasn't a controversy around him the controversy was around the article of, of him so oh, they, they, they wrote they, they were kind of mean to him or something is that what yeah happened? yeah it was it was you know um for you, i don't think you know but, i want to tell you something Cameron. yeah Maddie. For the most part, most people are pretty decent folk. Yeah. For the most part, right? And for the most part, there's just a lot of decent folk out there trying to trying to make their way and do the right thing and treat people well and be kind and all of that stuff. And there are certainly a few out there that that aren't, right? And they deserve our ire. But I just I, I would encourage all of us as we live this life and we go through, you know, slow your roll before you decide you're going to just throw down on someone. Because misunderstandings happen all the time. And I think if you examine your own life, you've said things you've regretted. You've um, done things that you've regretted. You've done things that maybe even weren't even consistent with your character, right? And this is just the truth of our humanness, right? This is just the truth of us. And, and so, you know, just take the, take the, 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 the better place and assume, assume goodness, uh, and from the beginning in most situations, because I think most people are. And so I feel badly for, for Brian Brandon Sanderson, if he got beat up for something he didn't deserve. And, but that happens a lot in the media, right? That happens, you know, the salaciousness is, is a, their tool, right? And, um, and you, you all should remember that, 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 uh, that there's not, there's, there's always a second side to a story in most cases. Sometimes it's cut and dry, but in many cases, there's a second side. And the media does not, uh, does not make money by uh, saying nice things and telling happy stories, right? So yeah. I agree with that, Christina. Skip across and laugh it off, right? Laugh it yes. off. So, so, so anyway, that's, that's my preach to you as, as a, a man who's well into the second half of his life and moving towards the end and has seen lots of things. And, you know, love and kindness is the better way, my friends. I, I tell you this, I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, generosity and, and rightness and, um, and doing well by others as best as you can uh, is the better, is the better way. And assume the good and then give people a chance to prove that they're not rather than assume the bad and make them prove that they are. That's a, that's a better way to go. All right. There's a, there's the preachy Alphineas. I apologize <laughs> for that, uh, my friends. I hope I didn't uh, disturb the chat with that, uh, that gabbiness, but that, uh, that's kind of the way I feel about things. Um, all right. So Pam, of course, uh, gave us a, a real smile because she got uh, weird magics in the, uh, in the mail. And a lot of you are getting stuff right now because we're doing uh, some of these shipments of these things. Chapter five boxes are being printed. Um, okay. As soon as chapter five boxes are printed, we are assembling the stuff and we're going to start uh, sending out chapter five. So and a lot of people are the reason why they haven't gotten weirded magics yet is because they also had chapter five in their Kickstarter. Right. And we were just trying to wait to get chapter five so we could send legends, lore and libations, weirded magics and chapter five in one shipment. Yes, and so yes, yes. So we are doing another interim shipment. <laughs> yes, we're doing another interim shipment. Again, we're paying for that. So I want everybody to know that's not uh, we didn't charge for that. There's no incremental cost to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're doing that. That is uh, that is part of our um, uh, desire because we're late uh, with the Kickstarter stuff. But again, I, I, I keep getting emails. That everybody's telling me that it was OK to wait because the stuff is so good and we're going to continue on that path. Our path is to provide you with top tier, excellent quality, over overdone, more stuff than you expected uh, materials, um, uh, even if it uh, means that we're going to be uh, late with things because 
the most important thing is that they're great uh, mm. for you, um, within reason, of course, within reason. So, uh, Where Did Magic is magnificent. It's about uh, it's about uh, I don't know eighty pages more than we said it was going to be, hundred pages more than we said it was going to be. Um, it's got wonderful new archetypes and classes. It's got hundred and something new spells, um, uh, all compatible with fifth edition. There's there's wonderful tales and lore. There's a bunch of our wonderful friends in there who have made essays. Um, and I just, I think you're going to going to love it. If you haven't gotten it, I encourage you to do so. Ah, there's a commercial, Camera Mendy. Oh, yeah, Scott has got, Scott is back. It's been a while since we'd seen Scott. Scott is one of our biggest dice collectors in the, uh, in the entirety of the GUI universe. And uh, these are actually all from Aether Objects, which um, is uh, Antonio's, uh, Anthony's um, uh, company. And and they sent us. I purchased some dice, and then they sent us some extra ones. And of course, one of them is sitting on on my desk in the in the in my studio. Uh, and uh, they are wonderful. They're just beautiful, well crafted, uh, magnificent uh, little pieces of art for all you dice goblins out there. So uh, thank you for sending these to us, Scott, and letting us have a peek. Wonderful picture. Awesome. Um, I had an idea about how we can get this into SDS slideshow. So just keep talking for All right, I will do that. <laughs> so, so, so I want to talk about this. So this is called the Dark Eye. And Ben Simon, Magnificent Ben in Germany, who we are going to see here pretty soon, right? Um, magnificent Ben in Germany uh, has been pushing on me, saying, Kim, you need, or sorry, not Kim, Alphineas, you need to uh, you need to take a look at this, right? This is a wonderful uh, TTRPG system. And I began looking at it this last week, and it, and he is right. It's it's really well done. It's got some beautiful artworks, and now there's it's it's a little different from uh, from what you might expect. It's a little more crunchy. It's a little more uh, a little more effort uh, required on the part of the player. It's probably not so great. I, I, I'd welcome Ben's comments on this because he's played it so much, but it's not not so great for beginners, uh, uh, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, who are just sort of stepping in and, um, you know, and all that stuff. But man, what a system uh, in terms of, of interest and, um, and funness. And I'll, uh, as I keep digging in, I'll, I'll know more. But if you've got comments on the dark eye and you know about it and you want to throw some stuff up in the chat, please do. Uh, because I think it is, uh, I think it is a, a, a potentially really a wonderful system. It began in Germany. It was made in Germany originally. And I think it's only sort of uh, expanding out uh, of late last few years. So, um, so I'm, uh, I'm I'm fascinated to spend a little more time with it and and dig through it a little bit more. So thank you, Ben. And ben actually gifted me with these. He is too generous. So thank you. It was very dear, my friend. Thank you. Well, this is your dance now, Camera Mendy. Okay. Some questions. So make sure you answer all those questions. Yes. I, I, I mean, I I feel like we've already talked about this a lot. So I'm just going to do a brief overview in case you have somehow managed to not hear this. Um, we are doing a contest right now. Um, we are going to extend the contest out at Alphineus' request till the end of May. Yes. So you will have a whole extra two weeks to get your submissions in. That's another month and a half. <laughs> so you have plenty of time to write. Um, basically, we are creating 12 new pre-generated characters for our convention games. And these are, they're going to be higher level. So I think they're going to be like level six. We currently have 12 uh, level one through three pre-gens. Uh, but you get the opportunity to write a backstory based on the portraits and some of the little information that we have available um, about these characters. Every week we're posting two of the portraits with a little description of um, like information about the background just in case you don't have the books if you have the book books most of this information is already available to you um but for anyone who doesn't have the books and is interested we're posting like what the fairy this is a fairy and like kind of just a little brief overview of what a fairy character might like look like or have in their background and so you can submit one backstory per character um we've already started getting uh quite a few entries and we're looking forward to seeing more um, we have 12 very interesting characters. A lot of them have custom Zayathe backgrounds, like we have an Inzandra Oz. We have 
uh, softling, which is different than a halfling. <laughs> um, we have a halfling too. Uh, anyway, so yeah, basically, uh, check it out. It's gooeycube.com slash contest. Um, I, there's a few typos on the page, but our tech guys have been really wrapped up. So <laughs> give us give us grace on that one. We haven't had time to go through and uh, uh, typo, typo. Yeah, typos. Yeah, here. I think sorcerer is spelled wrong. It's like schwarzer, schwarzer, schwarzer. It anyway. was actually spelled by Sean <laughs> Connery. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that's why you heard it that way. See, all right. So uh, that's a uh, that's my best Sean Connery. I don't. Very uh, good. Don't it was very good. good. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember when he showed up at the end of that Robin Hood movie with Kevin Costner, right? And he, yes. Uh, oh my God, I yeah. loved that movie. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say something controversial here. Oh God, I know. <laughs> I loved that movie. Also, I was a middle schooler, and I loved the 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 Dungeons and Dragons movies that came out around that era with snails. I loved it. I loved it. Remember and so I really it's controversial. It's it's a little uh, never mind. weird. I hope they bring back like it would be so fun if they did some crossover. I'm just saying. But what you know, whatever. I, I did enjoy the new one as well. But yeah, thank well, you. So, Harry so says snails was awesome. It was cheesy, <laughs> but it was so much fun. And you know, anyway, that's all a Thank you. Well, People listen, are saying listen, that they enjoyed these. Commander listen, Blue No, no, no. Listen, they were, they, they, were camp, <laughs> they were campy and cheesy, and but they yeah. were, you know. And the thing is, you know, finally we we do have a movie that came out that that really did. I I feel like did the did the game justice, mm -hmm. right? Really did the game justice, and it's magnificent. I, in fact, I'm gonna have to. I haven't been to, I haven't been back to the movie theater to see a movie twice, and I'm just. I think when we get back, ah. we'll go back and see it a second time. So, but here's the thing: what I love about Zayathe, right, is we have really tried not to just regurgitate uh, other worlds that have been made, right? And so uh, there there isn't some uh, fairy uh, special plane that you go to, right, with the fairy, right? There 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 is boundaries of their of their locations, right, which are bounded by their wild hearts. But uh, and when you pass pass beyond those boundaries, things kind of change and get very interesting. But uh, we didn't create a Feywild and, and all of that kind of stuff intentionally because we felt like it had been done before. And we love the idea of the, of the Feyari. And, and honestly, what's going on with the Feyari in the, in the gross uh, basis, the, the overarching tale, is that um, really when you look at their, at their holdings, their land holdings and stuff, they are getting smaller. Right. As as societies are expanding, these powerful societies are expanding, the fairies, uh, forests and those kinds of things are increasingly being put under pressure. And um, and this has created political issues and, and and could lead to serious you know, conflicts in the future, which which sadly the fairy probably would not prevail. Uh, but who knows? You know, there's a, there's a lot of tales out there. There are some who say that there are, there are silly and unsealy courts that have gotten together and they are actually embracing corruption magics to push back against these things. Right? Just, there's all kinds of wonderful you know, things. That... It's an interesting thing because like you like there uh, feel uh, the silly and unsealy obviously don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But when your home is threatened, there's a lot of things that you wouldn't think that you'd ever do. I mean, this is like homebrew, like brilliance here. And like, imagine, so you could either, you could have a character that's playing a fairy, you could have adventurers coming in to help them and say, hey, listen, you don't have to go this dark path. We can help you try and save your fort. I mean, there's just so much stuff that you could do with that conflict there to create some really interesting, you know, thoughtful, thought for poking um, sessions for your players. I'm just throwing Absolutely. that out Absolutely. Create moral dilemmas, all kinds of things that, uh, that are very interesting when you're playing, right? Well, and, your, uh, your Feyeri is like traveling out in Darkenhaven and she gets like a missive from her home that something's being threatened. And then the, that gives the whole adventuring party a reason to go to the forest to, to help out her family or their family. I don't know. They're, I don't know just well, like and that. of course, the mysteries of the wild hearts, right? Yeah. And, um, and the, 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 the deep magic that is within them and where, you know, the, where they came from, which, which has never been fully revealed uh, on purpose. Right. And, uh, and, you know, there, there are, there are those who believe that wild hearts have been um, harvested uh, in the past uh, and uh, harvested for what is a mystery that has not yet been brought forth, but mm. we are okay with that. Right. So this is right. Again, Zayathe is a little grim, right. And, um, uh, and definitely uh, more adult themed, right? That's why we're a PG thirteen, not uh, not for not for kids, and uh, and we want to stay in that place. We want to we want to make more adult themed, more 
uh, challenging, somewhat scary, right, intense uh, kind of tales and adventures. Um, that is that is our goal, and uh, and uh, we uh, we I, I like that in my games. I like the tension of it and the the, the tenseness of it. Um, I like conflicting things that are going on and 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 conf conflicts that are within conflicts, even right. So uh, that the interesting the, the, as the tales go on with the unseelie and the absolutely, Jen. This is this is the truth of of all uh, cultures, right? They and I love that Jen is like in her avatar. Know, she's in avatar. That, like that little portrait. That's a custom GUI Q portrait of Jen as an unseelie. So yeah, yeah, and and really, when you look at most of the cultures in Zayathe, right? Most of them, some are are really to the far edge, like Valandia, for example, right? But most of the cultures, there's not really a good. You're not really good is very relative because if you think about good, it's kind of relative in our world uh, in a lot of ways. And so, so the idea that the Republic is some shining, you know. A light, you know, kind of thing in the world is not true, right? They they have abused things, they have done things, right? Certainly, the Athenic Empire, which everyone looks back on and says, "Oh, it was wonderful." Well, it really was. If you were a Rockanoid, for example, right? Yeah, the the Athenic Empire was was terrible, right? They were oppressors, they were violent, they were they they killed your people, right? They pushed you out of your lands. So, you know, the complexities that we want to bring to to Zayathe are those complexities that 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 we deal with in our own world a little bit, right? Is is what's really moral and right, and and what sometimes is very moral and right for one group is not so moral and right for another, and that's what makes for wonderful tales and and frankly intense sort of back and forths and these moral dilemmas and all that stuff. I'm, I got way off track. I apologize. Cameron. It's okay. But, I'm enjoying this. But I saw, yeah, I saw what Randy. I did to say what Randy put up. What Randy, I agree with you. This you is. This is one of my more favored uh, images of uh, that we've had. Uh, she, uh, this was done by Vera a long time ago, and really is just a wonderful, just a wonderful image of a, a wizened and 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 smart and and talented and experienced person uh, in the in the world of the Feyari. And uh, I just I just love her. I love the the look on her face. I, there's just so many little things about this that, uh, you know, when you examine art the way I tend to look at art, it just uh, I mean, you could write you could write a volume about this woman, this is Feyari, uh, this Feyari woman. And um, and just just from looking at her. Anyway, I, I've waxed poetic. I apologize, my friends. I don't mean to do that. Let us continue, Cameron. Mendy. OK, sounds good. Um, That might be our last social media. Oh, no, I have one more. Hold on. Oh, no, I have a couple more. First off, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Is, Kevin I, thought, I know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and then um, James got Peculiar Brews. And a lot of people have been receiving their prizes from the game shows. Uh, give it like another, another few days uh, for things to arrive before uh, sending me emails because I know there's a few more still out to be delivered. But for the most part, everyone's game show prizes should be delivered. And I hope you guys are all enjoying them. Yes, no, we're excited. And we'll uh, obviously the shenanigans thing. And, and I, I apologize. We, we uh, Please understand that I was going to spend a little time with Mandy this week. And I just could not uh, because of our having to come out here to California and help with mom and <laughs> Uh, situation so so we will we will get better def definition around shenanigans and what it means and how you can win and all of that kind of stuff here over the next week and put that out also um also uh, for those of you on the writing contest uh for for all this stuff i wanted to to give more time so that really people have a chance to participate if they want to participate also because frankly it's hard to get out the word you know because i know you all are like me you get all these emails every day and you know, sometimes you just don't read an email because you don't have time because you got 150 of them and you just are like, goodness gracious, I can't do this. Right. And so the only way you hear about it is maybe if you happen to be passing by on if Facebook decided they were going to show it. Right. And they don't like showing anything that appears to be in any way uh, commercial. Right. Because they want you to pay for that. So there's just we I want to make sure people have a chance to know about it and learn about it and get a chance to participate. So that's where we're going to extend that. All right, what's this one, Camera Mendy? Okay, I, I caught the wrong screenshot, but this TikTok video has been going around, and it is so funny. It is a guy who's like, um, uh, there's like a body that's been found. You have to just watch it. You have to go find this post and watch it if you have not. There's like a body that's been found. It's these LARPers who find this body. It is like the most hysterical video, the way that they these, I mean, I, I'm assuming that they were performed. I just, anyway. wanna, I just have to ask yes. one question. Right. What? Are we sure 
that the that it's real, right? Are we sure that because because it's it's hilarious, right? But, but you wait, you think that it's you think that it's real? I, I thought that there was a possibility. Some people thought it was real. Yes, oh, absolutely. I think I think if it it's is, real, then it's really good. I think it <laughs> then is, it's I think hilarious. It not, I think it is not real. I I did not think. It's I don't real. think that it is. Real. I think it's just some hilarious freaking people doing the best deadpan performance of their, it their was, lives. It was unbelievable. <laughs> so, so my my hat went yeah. off to you. I was cackling. I just I yes. out loud. Right. It was so good. So good. Okay. yeah, you have to watch this. Yes, it is so funny. Okay, um, I think I have a couple more. Uh, oh, I want to give some shout out to Joe and Teal. Um, they have uh, some, what are they, uh, Wiz Kids minis available that they're selling. Um, definitely go check out their online store. They have a lot of great stuff. They so, have a lot of great stuff at good prices. They're, you know, yes. Joe's just moving things out. And so they, there's a chance for you to get some nice, nice, uh, nice miniatures and other things that uh, at a good price. And Joe and Teal have been great friends. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, for a long, long time, uh, yes. Freedom Game and Hobby is in Ohio, and we uh, we uh, work with them. and uh, And Joe and Teal are a part of that. Teal actually runs a lot of the retail stuff that they do. So I think she's their buyer, and and just does a wonderful job for them. Yes. All right, what's next, Cameron? Right. I think I have one, no, two more. Okay, uh, Michael, um, his painting has gotten so good. Yeah, so like, Michael, is, Michael has been practicing. practicing. Oh my goodness. Yes. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I just loved all the work that he did on this mini. Yeah, this uh, is worth zooming in on and looking at detail. Uh, yeah, it's really uh, is wonderful stuff. I, I again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the the things that so many of you put up in the den because they're inspirational, yeah. right? And this is the idea behind the den is is creating a place of inspiration and yeah. and uh, and this the artworks and the writings and the funny interesting videos you know and you know Jen is, is we talked about Jen a little earlier Jen is always putting up something when she does that just gives me a smile right and 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 to, to be in a place that is so uplifting uh, because of you all and so inspirational because of you all is just a, is just fantastic so thank you Michael's beautiful work and there's one other thing Michael does that I really appreciate, which is he upcycles things he finds at thrift stores and gives a new life with a new paint. And I think that's just brilliant. So, yeah. okay. Uh, here we go. Last one. Um, this <laughs> picture just tickled me to know. And it's a kitty looking at our materials, just being like, I want to run this campaign and that thing. And yeah, anyway, I just thought it was adorable, Tim. So, yeah, it was thank Tim. You. It was great. And we had some wonderful. Uh, wonderful laughs and some great comments. And I just, again, you know, I want you to know this y'all. I read all these comments. I, I uh, read them. I laugh at them. I try to comment back because, uh, because you really do inspire me and you inspire us. Uh, Mandy and I talk about this all the time that this, uh, this group, you know, cause people have said to me, how are you going to, how are you going to keep doing this? You know, they were telling me this when we had a few hundred people and I said, I'm just going to keep doing it cause I enjoy it. And, um, and I really cannot tell you, how much it is, how fun it is for us to see your comments, to laugh, right? I try sometimes to get up in the mornings and watch Geeky on his, uh, doing his coffee thing. And Rob puts up videos every once in a while and we get to look at those things. It's just, it's just the, 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 this, this breadth of talent and, and capability and just funness that is in this group. It, it blows my mind. And you should be, uh, you should be proud to, to be a part of that. And, um, and I hope, uh, I hope it brings you joy to be, be with us and be together uh, with all of the crazy gooey stuff that goes on. So, all right, camera, Mandy, you want to, did you find it? Did you actually find so it? So here's, here's what I remembered was that you had posted this on Facebook as well. So um, I can't find it in the Google drive anywhere, but I, I was like, Hmm, use that little <laughs> noggin, pulled it up on Facebook. So we are going to do the Facebook slideshow. I have no idea what's, what all is here? But let's talk about Sundestia. So, so Sundestia is definitely on the agenda for uh, towards the end of this year or the beginning of next year, depending on how things go with the Guys and Gax uh, Kickstarter. And we've obviously got to get some things out. I think you all have seen that we are um, we're finishing the last map for the Gloomport. Uh, so there's nine of those maps uh, that are 17 inches by 22 inches. They all put together and make this magnificent uh, cavern uh, portage that uh, resides beneath the city of Dark and Haven. And uh, of course, now we we have we've kind of completed the trifecta 
which is the the Kickstarter for the Mornwood, which is which is across the river from from Darkenhaven and has wonderful secrets. And thank you all so much for supporting that. It went beyond my expectations by by quite a bit in terms of how many people participated because we didn't really we didn't really put it out there. We just uh, we wanted to raise a little bit of money and uh, and we raised more than we thought. And it is it is so appreciated. And I promise you, the Mornwood is going to be fantastic. And I think we're going to be able to keep to our schedule. By the way, for all of you who are like, why the heck, you know. Uh, can you make your schedule? Because yet we didn't do it on the first Kickstarter. I think we're going to be able to make that schedule without a problem. And again, with Dark and Haven and, and the Gloomport and Chapter Five, which are really the last of, a, of most of the things we have to do from the first Kickstarter, um, some of the reason they are just delayed is because there's just a volume of work that um, that uh, is required. And and I have a standard for this this set. I want people to say in the future that. Darkenhaven and the Gloomport was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, fantasy city uh, made for for TTRPG for fantasy TTRPGs, and um, and I believe with the artworks and the maps and the wonderful localities that so many people have submitted, not just our own that we made up, but that they have submitted, they're going to be spectacular. Anyway, so Sundestia, the goal for Sundestia is to have it um, on the on the agenda for for probably next year and uh, to begin the exploration of this, this second wonderful continent, which is much larger, much, much larger than, uh, than Verdestia and has much more impact from the corrupting influences that, uh, that happened following the War of Ruin, as you can see with the, the, the proximity to Crooks, which was once called Responsia. And uh, as we explore Sundestia with you all, uh, we're also going to bring a few more um, higher level adventures. There's also some adventures we're going to publish with some of our friends. There is uh, there is uh, the uh, the Isle of Undu'ulu. Uh, there is Carnival Crashers. There is the Blood Mounds. Um, and then there's a Valandian adventure that we want to do as well. Um, stop it, Harry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was actually my first thought, though. Oh, great. <laughs> Larger. More. <laughs> I, we are, our goal is to to keep every book now going forward because because East Vodestia just got a little out of control, but uh, but it is it is magnificent and it's so much of your own work is in there and if you if you take the time to actually read it, I think it's a good read. It's um, it's enjoyable, and uh, and we're hoping to do the same with uh, with um, the Sundestian continent, and of course there's the three major empires that are there. That uh, again, we established three because they sort of have this this detente, right? That they have to hold with each other because if one attacks the other and one sided with one of them, they could easily wipe out the others, right? And so there's always there's a, two against one would 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 definitely overwhelm one of them. So there's always a lot of politics and things going on. But these are very very successful uh, successful empires, all three of them. They all share borders, and so it really makes for this wonderful uh, thing. That uh, that is going on, and of course they're they're always trying to enlist uh, enlist aid and do trade with Vedestia and Astrenia and even to some degree Sundestia, excuse me, Zustrenia, and uh, and so there's there's a, just a whole lot of of wonderment uh, in in this wonderful continent that we are we're bringing. All right, let's go to the next slide. See what happens, cameraman. Okay, yeah, because I, I have no idea. No idea what's next. Oh, Ooh, this. this image. No, that's this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the earlier images that we did. And it shows the, the the white mountain that is in the back, uh, which is uh, which is a very sacred and uh, interesting place, which we will explore more when we when we do Sundestia. But the sand ship, this is uh, this is the Komari tribe uh, tribes that are down here. They're various clans, and they uh, travel the Duunsara Sea uh, on these magnificent sand ships, and um, the the substance that uh, that they sail across. Uh, yeah, truly, uh, truly, uh, I don't disagree with that at all. That trade, that there, there's some, there's some trade wars. I, in fact, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a moment. That's a good, that's an excellent question. Um, so, uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so, um, that was David. Or sorry, David. Excuse me. Um, with that, I can't do it. I can't remember all these damn <laughs> handles, right? I if do I the best I can. I I'll, I'll do the best I can. I said, oh, that's David Stormer's portrait, but I didn't look carefully enough. So, yes. my apologies, David. Um, Anyway, so uh, so we uh, we want this wonderful Duunsara Sea to be a very interesting and uh, and 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 wonderful uh, environment 
for your adventurers to to go. So the Dun Sara is one of the places on the uh, the planet that is uh, is most um, uh, replete uh, with flowstone. And the the Komaris, uh, the Komaris, I can't remember the exact pronunciation off the top of my head, but uh, they uh, guard these this this place very very jealously, and um, they have secret mines. There are literally islands in the Dunsara, small ones that uh, that where they have secret flowstone uh, mines. And now the the the, the Komari cannot uh, cannot cut flowstones, and so they have arrangements with the Sarth of Zustrenia. And they trade uh, with the south of Zustrenia and bring them flowstones. But I, I think the Dunsara Sea is going to be magnificent. And I cannot wait to bring it forth uh, with you all and, and, um, and actually uh, populate it and the tribes and the clans that are there and what they are doing. And um, they're, very, uh, they're very wealthy. Uh, the, because of the flowstone mining, but the corrupting influences have also caused issues for some of the tribes folk, tribes folk. and so there's a there's a whole host of stuff, and there's even, of course, uh, some uh, some bit of uh, rivalry and contention over territories on the Dunsara and all of that stuff. So it's it's going to be, I think, just magnificent. And of course, you know, I can't imagine you know being your players and sailing across this wonderful ebony sea, right? That is made of this murk crystal, that is is almost it almost acts like a liquid, even though it is these 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 fine particles, and so it acts it acts contrary to all of the natural laws of Zayafe, and indeed, when the corrupting influences happened, creatures were actually altered and adjusted and there are uh, uh, there are worms beneath the the the, uh, the dune sara as well as a number of other uh, creatures that use a different kind they can't really see as well in the crystal you can see just a little bit but mostly they have to use sort of sonar type of uh, type of uh, uh, locations to be able to find their way around and there are predators and there are prey and it's uh, it's it's going to be magnificent anyway i hope everyone is, cool. is excited about this as i am it's a, i love this image ferdinand did this a long time ago for us and i still love it to this day so yes i put this up um uh this i think was Corey actually suggested it originally was could you actually make a a golem type creature or could you make a not a, a, a but a, a construct out of murk crystal and i thought it was a great idea and he actually submitted it as a monster and uh, we actually did the the artwork for it and uh, we'll learn more about these but uh, but i find it uh, fascinating that uh, this sort of amorphic uh, construct could uh, could exist which is which is pretty cool and uh, i hope people like it all right camera mendy what's next Oh, yes. Yeah. So I tried to show, um, uh, so I've had wonderful conversations uh, with Stefan, uh, Stefan and, um, and uh, Anthony and Devin and uh, Nick and Chris and uh, AJ about sort of the depiction and what we were going to bring to the table uh, in terms of sort of the, the African, the, the, the Near East, the Egyptian and and how you know our artworks were going to reflect that and so part of our part of our idea was to grab uh, imagery and um, this was one that just captured my heart right there here is another that just really really began to give us a feel for what uh, what could Sundestia look like that is not like a sort of rehashing of of sort of European flavors right but actually bringing in these magnificent uh, edifices and and structures and and I just I had a great time with them uh, contemplating. I think Anthony's in the chat, um, and uh, I saw I think I saw you down there, Anthony. And and we just um, even though we have been delayed because we had to be uh, to to bring forth these wonderful uh, images for you to see and understand what we could do. Um, when we start exploring this this new continent, I, I'm just I'm so excited for it. I'm just so uh, excited to bring it to the table. So um, I hope that uh, I hope you're enjoying this uh, little shift through. Let's stop here, Camera Mandy, for a second. So a lot of people have asked me about when when this is going to happen, and I've mentioned it quite a number of times. So I won't belabor the point too much. But at the time when all of the gods were, were creating um, peoples, uh, they, they uh, were following the creation of the, the humans, which were made by Avova. 
and um, as they created the, as they they began to create their own uh, peoples, uh, a, a group was created, uh, and I won't go into the depths of it, but we'll, we'll talk about it more later. There was a group of people that were created that um, ultimately, even though it was not intended to be this way, these were ultimately the people who were uh, blessed, if you want to call it that, or touched by the fire sovereign and given, uh, like the maroon with the uh, water sovereign, like the Ethereum people with the air uh, sovereign, and like the, um, the folk who, uh, uh, who are the, um, the uh, Gurund, who are the earth sovereign, uh, these, these people uh, who have yet to be named, we're probably going to do a contest around that, um, the, the, were, were the true fire race. And um, I love them. Uh, there's all kinds of lore that we've been spattering about and talking about. Um, uh, part of the discussions that we had with our Sundestia group was that um, they really do not show their their head markings, their 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 patterns, which uh, which are unique to every one of them. Uh, unless you are, if you are a friend, if you are a true friend, and you are invited to their homes you might see them remove their head covering and show, uh, show their true uh, markings, their true, uh, uh, how their, their structure of their, of their heads. And that is a great honor. And so this is, this is all sort of steeped in a number of different cultures that are here in our world. And we're trying to bring some of that wonderfulness to it. Um, but I think they are magnificent and I can't wait to reveal them. And uh, it's still going to be a while now. So you all have to be patient, but uh but part of the joy is the journey, yes. Uh, part of the joy of doing this together is the journey of it. Uh, but they are, they are coming. Now, the tragedy for these folk is that um, they lived, uh, the, the, their greatest areas of population were on um, the eastern side of Sundestia. And when Responsia uh, really cataclysmized, right, when it just blew up, right? And all of this corruption and all of this magical energy was released and all of these things happened. And the Du'un Sara Sea was, was literally created. It didn't evolve. It was literally created overnight. Um, and when this happened, uh, many of their people were, were sadly and terribly slain. And uh, so they are, they are a small number in the world, uh, a little bit like the Inzandra Oz in that regard, but for different reasons. Um, but uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot wait. They are, they are part of some of the Komari tribe. Uh, they, they do abide in the, um, in the, uh, the empires, uh, and some of them travel. And uh, I think that, uh, I think folks are just going to go gaga for them. I, the look of them alone is just magnificent. And um, anyway, I hope, I hope everybody out there is having a good time in the chat, uh, chat looking at them yeah. because. This is uh, this is one of my uh, one of one of the babies that I'm excited about uh, as we move forward. So, all right, all right. That, uh, is that Sundestia? Well, we had more, but it's already eleven oh two. All right, so, so my we friends, somehow went past our time. I mean, so, it's amazing. <laughs> how do we ever do that, my friends? Listen, I I, I wanted to talk a lot about Oavao uh, today, but I did not have time because of our circumstances. And so we will pick that up again next week. And thank you for all of the wonderful comments and thoughts and people have been messaging me and all of this stuff because it's going to go into the Mournwood and the submissions because if, if everything works the way I'm hoping the Mournwood is going to work, it is going to be the first time that the nine will truly be fully revealed in terms of what they are trying to do, right? Uh, with the Mornwood and also the corruption magics that are replete there because of the Ethernic ruin that is there. And of course, the natural world, the, the, the created world that is trying to go against both of those forces. And the Mornwood gives us this wonderful place. And of course, not just the surface of the Mornwood, but below the Mornwood as well, gives us this wonderful place to explore this, um, this true uh, a galactic conflict, right? This, this, this conflict of the Eterniverse, which is between the three forces uh, that are trying to uh, make or keep the world the way that they want it to be. So uh, onward and upward, my friends. And, uh, and thank you for the, uh, I also got a, quite a number of, of nice um, little messages and uh, from folks about, uh, about uh, Ms. Gu's mom. And thank you for your, um, your dear 
kind comments and your your prayers and your your thoughts and um it is it is really well appreciated uh, i showed some of them to diane um dianea uh and she was touched um i also uh geeky your your you sent that one particular message right when i was sitting with mom and i shared i shared with her your your kind words and mm. um it is uh it is not just uh, uh fun to play games with you. It is fun to be friends with you. And I appreciate that uh, more than just about anything else that we are doing with this crazy gooey thing. So I think that's a good place to, to say, yes. say goodbye. Yes, Cameron Mendy. I love Thank you me. all. Thank Brilliant. you so much for being Thank such you. an amazing community. Absolutely. And we will see, uh, we will see um, uh, Margaret and James here as soon as we figure out that. Uh, we've got some other guests that are coming, uh, as Cameron Mendy said. If you're oh, interested next in week we have someone. Oh yes, we do. I think that. Them. Hold on, let me just let me just pull it up. Really while quickly. she's doing that, just in your minds, we we want to do these panels while we're out, and I'm I'm really hoping to yes. be in the chat and chatting with you. So so if you're interested in doing that, we were thinking about maybe doing something on figure painting and figure sculpting, uh, which we have so many good painters and sculptors that could uh, provide uh, information to folks. Now I know there's lots of videos that are out there and all of that stuff, but it still might be fun to hear from from our friends in the community and, and do that. So if you got some ideas and other things you'd like to, to talk about, and we could do that for the time while we're uh, over there. Um, over there, right? Over there. <laughs> if you know that song, you really are old. Tell <laughs> me, listen. <laughs> We have an extraordinary GM on next week named Mike Kenyon yeah, and nice. going to give us some great insights into running games, running GUI games, running other games. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. Yeah, Mike, uh, Mike's good. You're going to be blown away about Mike's background. He's one of our GUI people and you're going to, you're going to have fun uh, hearing from him. And, uh, and then we'll also, we'll talk a little more about Oavao uh, next, uh, next week and the Warren Wood and give you a lot of, uh, a lot of new things. And, to, and next week we will launch the, the Mornwood uh, writing submission. We'll open that up next week because I couldn't do it this week because of the circumstances we were doing. So um, appreciate you all so much. And thank you for giving us this uh, time on Saturday mornings. We hope we give it back to you that you enjoy it well. And um, we will uh, we will see you here in, uh, in the GUI Den or in the Discord. And then we'll see you next Saturday, hopefully, and with Mike. And uh, may all your adventures. Be sticky. Aha, Cameraman, well played. <laughs>